Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about some books. It's the end of April, which means it's time for a, another round of my TBR game, which is TBR Carnival. If you haven't been here before, TBR Carnival is my TBR game where I pick a different carnival related game every single month. I adapt it to make it a bit more reading prompt related and I play it to pick the five next books that I'll be reading in the following month. So I have played four rounds of this game so far and I am running out of TBR carnival games idea. So first things first, I want you guys to come and let me know in the comments down below any carnival games that you played at any carnivals you went to, fates, all that sort of thing. Come and let me know what those were in the comments down below. And potentially if you want to add a little bit to that, how I could adapt that into a TBR game. So the way that I could add prompts to it or something like that. Because in this video, I'm going to be going back to some of the old games that I've been playing over the last couple months. Specifically for this video, I'm going to do my wheel of TBR. So how this works is I've got my wheel here with 16 different prompts on it. I spin the wheel and every time I land on a prompt I have to find a book that relates to that prompt. If I land on one of these colours more than once in a row then I have to add a book to the TBR. Without further ado, let's get into spin one. <laughs> So for spin one, we got a book that was published after 2015, and I am cutting it real fine, I think, with this one. The Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor was published in 2016, so very, very close. This is a book that I picked up from Waterstones, I think, a couple months ago, and it's been staring at me because it sits right next to my bedside table in my bedroom, and it's just been sitting there staring at me like, you need to read me ASAP. I found out that I've got an audiobook of this at the library, so what better time than to read it? As for what this is about, it says, A city in flames, London 1666. As the great fire consumes everything in its path, the body of a man is found in the ruins of St. Paul's Cathedral, stabbed in the neck, thumbs tied behind his back. A woman on the run, James Marwood, the son of a traitor, is forced to hunt the killer through the city's devastated streets. There he encounters a determined young woman who will stop at nothing to secure her freedom. A killer seeking revenge. When a second murder victim washes up in the fleet ditch, Marwood is drawn into the political and religious intrigue of Westminster and across the path of a killer with nothing to lose. That sounds absolutely fascinating to me. A murder mystery set in the Great Fire in London in the 1600s, so it's super, super old timey and old fashioned. I can't wait, so that's the first book. Let's jump into spin number two. <laughs> book with yellow on the cover. Now it doesn't have to be a completely yellow cover, it just has to have yellow on the cover. And for this one I picked Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee. This is a book that I've been interested in reading ever since there was a fairy loot edition of it I think last year and it was right around the time that I cancelled my fairy loot subscription so I didn't receive this next one but then I, I saw people like uh, Beth over at Books Nest talking about it and how much she loved it and of course it's been on my mind ever since. As for the yellow you can see his little glasses there those are kind of yellowy goldy. But as for what this story is about, it says, history is told by the conquerors. Across the Western world, museums display the spoils of war, of conquest, of colonialism. Priceless pieces of art looted from other countries kept even now. Will Chen plans to steal them back. A senior at Harvard, Will fits comfortably in his carefully curated roles. A perfect student, an art history major, an artist, a perfect son, the American dream. But when a shadowy corporation reaches out with an impossible and illegal job offer, Will finds himself as something else as well. The leader of a heist to steal back five priceless Chinese sculptures looted from Beijing centuries ago. His crew is every heist archetype one can imagine, or at least the closest he can get. Each has their own complicated relationship with China and the identity they've cultivated as Chinese Americans. But when when Will asks, none of them can turn him down. If they succeed, they earn $50 million and a chance to make history. If they fail, it's not just the loss of everything they've dreamed for themselves, but yet another thwarted attempt to take back what colonialism has stolen. Just the other day, I saw a post that was all about calling out the British Museum for the fact that there was this one creator that called them out for the British Museum being filled to the brim with stolen artifacts from other countries. This creator called them out and the British Museum then blocked that creator. So I've been seeing this kind 
come up a ton in conversation even in the last couple of weeks and I'm very very interested in exploring this in a bit more detail especially from the perspective of people who have a somewhat challenging relationship with their history and even those who are really really knowledgeable about how all of this came to pass because they've studied it themselves so this should be a really really fascinating read and I cannot wait to pick it up in May. Let's go for spin number three. <laughs> purple on the cover. Again, it doesn't need to be fully purple, just needs to have it on the cover. And for this one, I've gone for A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. I know these look all very red and pink, but if you look at some of the little kisses, they've got little bits of purple in there as well. So this totally counts. As for what it's about, it says, it started with a kiss. Ren Beaumont is beautiful and kind. She always gets good grades and is loved by everyone at Lancaster Prep. Everyone but brooding campus bad boy, Crew Lancaster. Crew is rich and handsome. His life is meant to be easy, but when you have an overbearing father and your family own the school, the pressure to be the best makes life harder than everyone thinks. And he certainly doesn't have time for innocent girls who only care about their classes. Girls like Ren Beaumont. But when unexpected chemistry disrupts psychology class, Ren discovers there's more to life than good grades and Crew finally understands what it's like to be in love. This sounds like a fun, smutty, steamy, nice, easy romance. Can't wait. On to spin number four. <laughs> Okay, spin number four has a book with a number in the title and for this one I've picked One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. I've just picked this up from the library and I know that a few people I've seen read it and review it didn't love it but some of their criticisms are actually things that I like in the books that I read so I figure that means I have a good chance of liking this one. As for what it's about it says Elspeth needs a monster, the monster might be her. Elspeth Spindle needs more than luck to stay safe in the eerie mislocked kingdom of Blunder. She needs a monster. She calls him the Nightmare and ancient mercurial spirit trapped in her head. He protects her, he keeps her secret, but nothing comes for free, especially magic. When Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road, she is thrust into a world of shadow and deception. Together they embark on a dangerous quest to cure the town of Blunder from the dark magic infecting it. As the stakes heighten and their undeniable attraction intensifies, Elspeth is forced to face her darkest secret yet. The nightmare is slowly, darkly taking over her mind, and she might not be able to stop him. A maiden must unleash the monster within to save her kingdom in this dark, lush, gothic fantasy debut. Love a debut, love lush, dark, gothic fantasy. This should be a fun one. On to spin number five, and hopefully this final spin. <laughs> Rather aptly, I guess, spin number five is a book with five words in the title. And for that one, I have picked The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Oseman. One, two, three, four, five, five words. I love this series by this author. This is the second book in the Thursday Murder Club series by Richard Oseman. It essentially follows a group of elderly people at an aged care facility who put together a club that meet on Thursdays, as you'd expect, and they essentially run through old cold cases that the police have never been able to solve, and they work together in this weekly club to attempt to solve them. But then a real-life, real-time murder case comes knocking on their door when a body is found on the grounds of the aged care facility, and a second centuries-old case is brought up as well when a second body is found too. The Thursday Murder Club, the first book in the series, was honestly thrilling, hilarious, amazing. It makes you value life so much because you're reading from the perspective of people who are reaching the end of their lives. And the way that they just bamboozle and confuddle and confuse the cops is hilarious. So I am so, so excited to be jumping into the second one. So we didn't have any repeat colors. So this is my TBR for May. We've got Portrait of a Thief by Grace D. Lee, The Man Who Died Twice by Richard Osman, The Ashes of London by Andrew Taylor, A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime by Monica Murphy, and One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. It's a pretty decent TBR. It's not too long. A lot of these I've got audiobooks for, so it should be fairly easy to smash through. But anyway, that is the end of this TBR game. So as I said at the beginning of my video, let me know down below if there are any other carnival games that you'd like to see me play in some of these videos, or just let me know what you're reading at the moment, loving it, hating it, all that kind of thing. Come and chat to me in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys and I do my best to reply to every single comment. I really really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please do let me know by liking subscribing and hitting that notification bell all down below it's super super easy way to help my channel grow and I will see you lovely people in my next video bye